Well, welcome everyone. It is great to see all of these folks popping into our meeting this evening and to see many of your faces. I'm so delighted that you made time to join us this evening. Um, perhaps if you're anything like me, it's a good time of the year to connect as we are all sort of, you know, finishing touches on the repertoire and like, did I order enough of those? And uh, I've got to learn that music really fast and all of those things are happening right now. Um, it's maybe a good chance for us to brainstorm and to meet one another. Uh, tonight's session is less of a presentation and more of an information sharing time where we will tell you a little bit about some of the resources that ACDA has and, and just refresh your minds on those things and talk a little bit about some of our new ideas and plans in the collegiate area and then also hear from you and we will have some time for discussion tonight and also for sharing what are your hopes, dreams and needs and how can we better fulfill those as an organization. My name is Karen Daly. I am the National Chair for College and University Choirs. If I haven't met you, it's great to see you and meet you here. And I am joined uh, by a few of my colleagues tonight. <clears throat> there is a team of four of us now that are um, on the Repertoire and Resource Leadership sort of group for college and university. And um, I'm very excited that the student activities position in particular has been expanded. Um, this is an area of renewed focus for ACDA and we're really excited about how we can boost collegiate membership and also help those of us that are teaching at the college level. So with that, I would like to invite you to introduce yourself in the chat or to, and to wave if you, have your camera on and tell us your name, tell us where you're from in the chat. We'd love to read that. And I'm going to turn it over to our two student activities chairs, Ryan Beacon and Janaea Robinson to tell you a little bit more about themselves. Thanks, Karen. I'm Ryan Beacon at Wichita State. Um, in, in, when you're doing that in the chat, it would actually be really helpful to us if you have a student chapter uh, at your university already that you are working with, if you could put in the chat your name and the university that you have a, a chapter at so that we can go back and, and make sure that we have every, we're trying to get the records updated for the, for the student chapters and whatnot. So that would be super helpful. Sorry, go ahead, Janaea. Oh, that's great. I'm Janaea Robison. I'm at the University of Missouri, Kansas City Conservatory and um, serving as the, the student chapter, or oh gosh, where am I? What am I doing? It's still summer. Um, student activities, the program sort of side of things. So today I wanted to to pop on. I am in California right now and I have a rehearsal in a little bit. So I just have a little bit of time to introduce myself and um, just talk to you briefly about how excited Ryan and I are to be able to engage in this level of student activities. Um, we are focused on preparing for uh, student engagement at the national ACA conference and the, the forum and all the activities that will happen at that uh, national conference. And so Ryan and I are busy looking at ideas to be able to engage the students when, when we're all together um, in, in Cincinnati. And um, so that, that's sort of where we are right now. We want to be able to, to be transparent with as many ideas and um, times to come together so that students understand that the national conference is a way for them to engage in the profession and start to network and, and to find community in, in, our, in our field. So uh, trying to think if there's anything else that we were going to talk about. Yeah, I mean, just the, I think things to put on your radar screen, I know Karen's going to talk about this a little more, is um, the at the conference in Cincinnati, there will be opportunities for the students to network with one another uh, and at roundtables, at a, a reception, and of course also participating in the conducting workshops and, and et cetera. So we're, we're part of facilitating that and uh, also open to any suggestions of other ways that we can uh, build this network with these young people as they move forward as well. Thank you, Ryan, Janae. 
great to hear from you and, meet, and to meet you. Um, I, I should say, and I, I neglected to say that the collegiate area is so unique in the sense that likely with even within tonight's call, we have representatives from an, from undergraduate programs, from graduate programs, those of us perhaps that conduct collegiate choirs or instruct choral methods or teach conducting. And we are all doing this at many different levels and in many different places. And so there's a, a really beautiful diversity in this particular area and um, something that I think we want to um, be sure that we are accommodating as we move forward. And, um, and so, so hopefully there will be something for everyone tonight is I guess what I'm saying. <laughs> so we're going to go on and, and I'll share my screen and just begin with some like basic resources actually, just things that you probably have seen before, but um, might be nice to just uh, refresh on these. So if you're just kind of wanting to check in with the various um, things that ACDA is doing for students and in the collegiate area, I'm gonna to come to this website here. I hope you all can see, uh, pardon me, this one here. This is our sort of landing page for student activities and resources. And um, this is maybe just a good place to start or to send your students even to this page to start to see, okay, yeah, there are ways that we can engage here publications, of course, student chapters, student times, conferences, and we'll talk much more about that. The Conducting Masterclass, the Brock Prize for Student Composers, the Outstanding Chapter Award, the Julius Herford Dissertation Prize, and mentoring. And Sandra is going to speak with us about mentoring this evening. So this is just sort of a, a basic here. Um, if you do lead a student chapter or you have students who are excited and would like to start a chapter, that's a process that I went through seven years ago at Duquesne and it was not difficult. Um, this website is really helpful. And um, in my case, there was a chapter that was <clears throat> in existence in the past. So there are you know, ways to reactivate here on the student chapters page. This I thought was really helpful, frequently asked questions, checklists, the sample constitution, and I, you know, I know we'd all be willing to share our constitutions with you if you'd like to see more than that um, application form. So this is great, you know, if you've got a really motivated group of students that want to get started. Um, I'll just talk a little bit about. Actually, I'll pause there because I know that Lodestar is sort of related to what um, we're discussing right now, which is sort of the development of, of uh, future leaders in the field. Maybe I'll just stop share for a moment and turn it over to Sandra to tell us a bit about that program. Hi, um, I am Sandra, Director of Membership and Communications at the National Office. And um, Lodestar is kind of the next level evolution of our mentoring program that was started back in like 2013. But this um, new platform uh, launched last fall and I'm going to just share my screen and give you um, give you just a, a quick look at what it might look like. Let's see. So um, this, you know, we'd love for you to encourage, um, you know, your students to to register for this. Um, it's also something that, you know, as faculty, you could register as mentors. Um, we have a lot of of active members who also register as apprentices looking for you know coaching and new areas of choral conducting and genres and so on but um what you can do is just go to this mentoring.acda.org um, site um, and there's a link to it from resources in the acda.org um, domain and all you do is is create account here and uh, then you get options to register for the thing um, as either a mentor or an apprentice or a community participant. And um, for any um, student members, you'd have to be a member to actually register as a, an apprentice or a mentor. Um, you just fill out your information and that's my mother's email. Let's see, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, you just uh, follow the prompts, it's pretty easy. Um, for um, for mentors and apprentices, we ask uh, like you know a decent amount of information because this basically helps um, apprentices search um, in the mentor pool for a mentor that might have the expertise that they're looking for or 
um, an interest that they're looking for. So we ask mentors to share, you know, some about their interests and what, what their specialties are and so on. Um, for apprentices, we also ask, uh, you know, information about where they think they're heading and what level they're at and so on. So that um, the, the process is anonymous up until the match is accepted on both ends. So if you get a mentor request, as if you're registered as a mentor, you can look on that um, profile and it will be anonymous, but you will see the, the, the potential apprentices' um, areas of interest and what they're looking for in a mentoring relationship and so on. So very quickly, that's, that's kind of the, the mentoring program. And you can, you know, if you have questions on that or, you know, want help with talking about it or working with your way through it, just email us at a membership at acda.org. Thanks, Sandra. That's really helpful. Well, I'll take a moment to talk about our big event, which is coming up, of course, the National Conference, which is in February in Cincinnati. And we have revisioned a little bit um, how the student um, activities and student collegiate activities will transpire at the conference. We're very excited about that. Um, so the first thing to know, uh, just to flag on your calendar, the conference is, of course, February 22nd to 25th. And the 23rd of February, which is the Thursday, will be um, basically a day long event called the Student Conducting Institute. And um, it begins, the day begins with an undergraduate and graduate conducting masterclass. We'll talk a bit more about those. And um, if you remember the conducting competition, uh, this is um, what we'll be offering in that vein in this year, a masterclass, um, not a competition. And then there will be a pedagogy forum. And this is something new. And um, I guess like I'll represent here and say that as a collegiate conductor teaching conducting, I was very, uh, I'm eager to connect with other people doing the same. And so this is I one of perhaps the first time or one of the first times that we'll have a session at the national conference dedicated to conducting pedagogy. And um, our conducting clinicians will, it'll be sort of a round table or a forum presentation and they will be sharing with us how they approach conducting pedagogy, some of the resources that they like to use, um, some of their you know, favorite practices and ways that they uh, think about equity and inclusion in their, in their conducting pedagogy. So I think it'll be a really um, special session. Then there will be a student activities forum a little bit later in the day. And I know Ryan and Janae are working on that and the format and all. And Please jump in, Ryan, if you want to say anything. <laughs> okay. uh, and then there will be a student reception. So really, it's almost like a student dedicated track for the day. And um, of course, this will happen simultaneously to some other events and concerts. But we hope that you can be a part of as many of those events as, as possible. So let me now share my screen again and, and bring us to the uh, conference website, which is where you'll find all of this information. Right here on the right side, we've got student conducting masterclass submissions. The applications are opening October 3rd, so right around the corner, I guess, and will be due November, uh, November 3rd. And students will be uh, notified by January 15th. So um, the guidelines here, I think, provide some really good details. So I won't go through them all, but I submit them to you about eligibility about how to um, how to apply and what to prepare and the video guidelines. Um, I, Amanda Quist is our coordinator. I should have said that earlier. Amanda, of course, has been in that role for a long time and knows everything about collegiate activities at AZDA. And she is really the um, expert on this particular event. But I know there have been some important changes made for 2023, um, in, including things with regard to historically marginalized and underrepresented composers. I, I can't remember if those were part of 2021, but Amanda, Amanda would know for sure. Um, but that is something that we've been very uh, cognizant of. As we, as we put this together this year. So lots of information here. We will be choosing between six and eight students to participate in both undergraduate and graduate master classes. And the clinicians this year, it's a panel of four clinicians. Uh, it will be Felissa Barber from Yale, uh, Andre Thomas, who's emeritus, of course, at Yale and Florida State, and Elizabeth Schauer from 
Uh oh, I didn't write this down. It's University of Arizona. Did I say that right? Please someone chat to me if I just said that wrongly. <laughs> Okay, All right. And Joe Miller from Cincinnati College um, of Music, Conservatory of Music, for me. So we're really excited to have a, a great panel there. And then uh, again, if we come back to this page here, we have a rubric, which I know through the whole national conference planning process, the rubrics have been really helpful this year. And so um, this is a great way to prepare with your students and meet the clinicians. Okay, well, I could have looked here, I guess. There's Melissa and Elizabeth, and it looks like the other two clinicians aren't, aren't posted yet. So, so that is what we've got coming up for the national conference, which is gonna be really spectacular. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to pop them in the chat, or we can certainly talk about them um, in our, is indeed at University of Arizona. Thank you, Sundra. Whew. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, with that, that went much faster than I expected. I'm going to stop share here. I hope that catches everyone up to speed on what's going on in the collegiate area and uh, lots, lots of different ways for our students and colleagues to engage. Um, what I really wanted to do this evening is to give us a chance to talk to one another. And this is something that I know we did recently at an, an NCCO event. It was really special just to have a conversation. Um, so I'm gonna ask Sandra in a moment to split us randomly up into some breakout groups of four or five people. And if you're um, willing to join us, that would be fantastic. And, and here's your assignment, everyone. So we're literally gonna start with a, how are you doing? Who are you? We should start with that. Who are you? <laughs> How are you doing as you enter this academic year? How are you feeling about things post-pandemic or mid-pandemic, however you think about that? And just as you go into a year um, having been through what we've been through, um, what are some needs? So just the check-in, how are you? And then second, what are some needs, uh, hopes or dreams that you have for your academic year or ways that you're sort of adjusting and making changes and maybe little things that you're excited to try in your practice this year? And lastly, how can ACDA continue to support you or better support you? And if I could ask one person in each breakout room just to keep some mental notes or to make a few notes on those uh, on that last question. How can ACDA continue to support you or better support you? Oh, thank you so much, Sandra, for putting those questions there in the chat. Um, that would be great because we will plan to come back and share with the group um, some of those ideas. And if we have a little time, maybe we can even share a few ideas about what are your hopes and dreams. But um, as we share, you know, um, principally, we'll be thinking about how we can um, work with you and support you. So with that, let us move into breakouts. And I'm going to say, let's see, the time is 718. I'm going to say we'll spend 15 minutes basically in our breakouts. So enjoy your time with one another. Thanks. And you said 15 minutes, Karen? Yeah, let's do 15. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome back, everyone. If you'd be so kind as to mute yourself, that would be great. Thank you so much. I'm hearing like beautiful outdoor sounds. <laughs> I hope your conversations were um, were fun and interesting. And I certainly made some notes already. And uh, one member of my breakout group said, well, ACD is doing an amazing job. And that's really great to hear. And maybe the question is, you know, if we dreamed big, what else, what else could we do for collegiate, the collegiate sort of sphere? Um, so I would love to hear from a representation from each group. Just maybe put your hand up if you're ready to share with us some things that you discussed in your group. Let's begin with Susan. Hello. So I was in a group with Julie and Rachel, and all three of us are feeling pretty stressed about planning for the school year. Um, in in one of our cases, it, um, one is starting at a new university and hasn't met the choir yet. And for a couple of us, uh, um, we know that our choirs are going to be small. Um, and with, I know in my case for sure, with very few men that are actually confident singers. And uh, so we're feeling 
the stress of really not knowing how to pick music yet and and wondering if ACDA has resources or could put together resources of good SAB music that's appropriate for university as opposed to junior high. Um, that would be something that we're, we're kind of needing right now. That's great, Susan. That's really helpful. Are, are others feeling stressed about enrollment right now? <laughs> I just checked my enrollment. It wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> Definitely, thank you so much. Who else would like to share with us? Becca, hey. Hi, I'm Becca. Um, let's see, The we had some similar thoughts uh, towards the end there. Um, before that, we, we, we are all concerned about enrollment and also concerned about sort of the, the meeting of, of, of levels of ability in our groups that we have um, in some, some of our programs have been growing and changing and in flux in the last few years because of COVID and other factors. So, um, you know, if the group was really ready to advance and so we still have some of those people and then we have other people who are, um, I think someone put it, learning how to college because they, they, just need to, the basic skills of how to be in an extracurricular activity, how to schedule their time, how to how to um, navigate their their whole life. Um, so we're sort of having this wide range of abilities in the in our groups, um, in in general, um, um, and also changing expectations. It came up um, from our from our colleges themselves. There is sort of an expectation to see high enrollment for student involvement. Um, someone mentioned that at the Big Ten schools, they have this image of the of the uh, 500 person choir and the men's choir and and all the different ensembles. Um, and on the smaller level, it's it's your job's on the line if you don't have enough people enrolled. Um, so we talked about that and and recruiting and the challenge of a cappella groups and a cappella culture being a wonderful thing that people are singing and involved, but the technology being such that everybody can do this on their own and they do. Um, and so what can we do to be better recruiters? Um, I think those were some of the things that we, that we all talked about um, in terms of what ACDA can do. Um, we echo that about the realities of our groups that, that we see a lot of, of um, repertoire for either big groups or very high level groups. But the reality on the ground is I have big high school students, um, big, beginner to mid-level high school students and and the repertoire that's out there sometimes doesn't doesn't suit them anymore emotionally and they're not really ready for community choir uh, 13th graders yeah I love that that's what I have um and and I think that that is a concern and um I love that someone in our group talked about mentorship um being between similar institutions not just beginners to to veteran conductors but to to you know reach out to people who are in the similar situations and combine um, that's something that in Massachusetts we're trying to do a lot of um, connecting um, at the collegiate level we we used to have an intercollegiate choral festival that was pretty successful for many years um, where smaller groups could get together and make a larger group once a year and we're talking about how to bring that back um, after COVID um, but um, having people from different similar institutions being able to talk. And um, I would also say that this, um, this particular meeting has already been super helpful to me. <laughs> so the idea of meeting the first or second week of August is like, that's great. I just love that. So um, thank you. Thank you, Becca. Um, I see Ree, I see your hand up. Why don't you go next? Hi, um, so in my group, I had Karen, David, and Steph, and we talked about how um, ACDA provides a lot of networking opportunities um, for students to connect with each other, and that it's really nice to go to a conference and see other different types of choir directors like church choir directors and um, community choirs and um, college professors, things like that, to just kind of get an idea of what 
what we could, you know, what students could do after they graduate. Um, and we also talked about how um, I know Steph mentioned um, that uh, if there could be more uh, funding for research into underrepresented composers um, of cho choral music. And um, she mentioned this one person that she knew that was doing some Italian uh, research on this uh, Italian nun. And so that she she would have like she would like for ACDA to do some uh, to provide some funding for some research into underrepresented composers, uh, and then Dave he uh, he was super nice and he was saying that ACDA has done so much for him and now he's passing that along to his students um, when he takes them to conventions. And overall, I think we're feeling a sense of a mix of hope and maybe a little nervous about what the what the year is going to bring um, about the different abilities of, of choir. I um, and I, I said that I was because <laughs> I'm a undergrad music ed major. So I said I hope to that to, you know, to work on passing my jury and um, Steph talked about how her choir was mixed abilities so just kind of she was looking forward to seeing how that um the different music and things that they were going to be able to do thanks Reed. are there other groups that would like to report back to us lisa thank you i was with uh byron black elizabeth swanson and bob prouse and we talked about there are, there are many ways that ACDA is supporting us. And we're very happy that there's this, that there's a, a, a student track happening. Couple of questions, uh, maybe some more specific data or information on how to rebuild a student chapter. If you've had one that's, that's, been, that's been grandiose, that's maybe come down, are there some suggestions that maybe we even as as chapter advisors might have for one another. So this this opportunity to talk with one another is great. And I think that's how we'll help one another make that happen. Uh, let's see. And Elizabeth talked about how their state chapter had hosted some webinars just for their undergraduate students. And she's in, uh, she's at CU Boulder, so she's in Colorado. And was wondering if maybe that's something we might want to think about at the national level, just having that available for sometimes for students or student chapters. Looking at, I know that we have a mentorship program and I'm hoping that many of you, it's very rewarding. I'm hoping that many of you, if you haven't been a mentor that you'll take an opportunity to do that. So that's a little plug there. Looking at the national level, trying to figure out maybe even how to get a little more help and data to state chapters. So I, I didn't get a lot of data on that. So I might mute in a second and see how we can get um, a little more data from my group on that. And one of the questions, um, uh, one of the last one things we talked about was, we know that everyone does an annual report to national and that people talk about the, th the activities that they do with their chapters, would there be a way to take some of that data? And if it's there on the website, I, I apologize if I haven't looked for it, but just wondering if there's a way that we might even have a little more suggestion on some creative ways that we could do things together. And uh, I'm actually chatting with someone on, uh, on the quiet side here about talking about trying to adopt chapters or or to do some group things long distance. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I'll meet myself if anyone else from the group wants to add. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> That's really helpful. You know, we've had some preliminary discussion about creating some type of a handbook for student chapters. Something that's a little more substantive than what we have with ideas for activities and, and just a little bit more meat um, in terms of what that might look like. I know my own student chapter, as creative as they are, you know, sometimes they run a little dry on ideas and, and I, I know they would benefit from knowing what other chapters are doing more readily. So thank you. Um, 
Are there other folks that would like to report back from their group? Just feel free to unmute. I think it's, I'm not gonna say it right. Is it Leticia? I know we've met, but I don't know if I remember yes. how to say your name. It is Leticia. Okay, go for it. Yes. Uh, hello everyone. I was in the group with Morgan uh, Ludic, Eric Foley, and David uh, Cleaver. So um, actually we started the introductions and I, David asked, so how are we doing? And I said, well, not so well because my uh, school is now currently planning to cut the choral methods class, which is actually the only class that choral students will have any choral learning besides all the other education classes that are more general. And so after we talked a little bit and Eric pointed out very beautifully that it doesn't matter how many other classes they take, if they take good diction or good voice pedagogy, if they don't know how to run a rehearsal, how can they be good choir directors? And then my concern that I would like to bring to ACDA is, how can we have ACDA support to have language to bring to people that are not from our area so we can have our, you know, our greatest organization to help us to say we actually need this class happening for X, Y, and Z. Um, because that's really the class that is going to form the students that are going to become the choir directors. And I feel like we are not at least like in my institution, we are not giving the correct support to form those students to go into the classroom. So that's what I what I would like to to maybe receive more support. Thank you, everyone. And if anybody else in the group would add something else. Thank you. Michael. Hi, uh, just a couple of things. And Leticia, to, to, uh, to go back to your last question about support, uh, something that we did in the, with, in the Northwest region is we had several schools not able to uh, pay for any professional development. And Brian Galante, as our region president, wrote uh, a nice letter of support to the principals of that particular school. I don't know if that's something that uh, ACDI might want to take up as if, if students, if or if uh, any institutions are looking at getting ready cer uh, certain classes, that might be a, a, a uh, a sign of support from uh, you know, our, our accrediting, we're not really accrediting, but our, our main professional organization. Um, but uh, to my other question was, um, who, is, who is the point person for the Hereford Dissertation Prize? Is that this group or is, is, is that you, uh, Karen? That would be the, um, that would be the research um, standing committee. Okay, and, all right. Uh, I know, <clears throat> Megan Solomon has been. I think that's switching over to somebody else in that group. Okay. Um, since it's, it was student, uh, you mentioned it in the earlier thing. Is there something that the the editorial board of the Coral Journal we've talked, uh, we've tossed it back and forth several times. If if uh, we could get a list of the people that did the students that did support or did apply for that. Uh, just because we're looking for more material for that might be fleshed out to articles, uh, and I've I've asked Amanda, but I haven't uh, in the past. I haven't heard back. So just looking for uh, kind of a point person for that. So thank you, Michael. Did I miss anybody who would like to report to us or share some ideas? Well, let me then ask more broadly if there were any questions that came up for you from this evening's session any topic that you felt that we didn't cover or that you'd like clarification on. We'd have, I'd happily talk more about any of the topics that were presented this evening. So feel free to chat or unmute. It feels like, it feels like it's been important for us to get together. And I suspect that even though if you're anything like me, Zoom fatigue is like over my head, but it is really nice to get a chance to hear some ideas and maybe this is something we can do um, even in a more focused manner. And Becca, to your point about um, some, of, some of the shared characteristics among institutions, I think that's a really important, important consideration. Um, but uh, if I'm, if, not hearing any other questions or seeing any in the chat. Uh, I'll just ask Sandra if 
there's anything that you think that we may have missed? Um, I am not aware of anything that you all missed. I'm pretty excited about our new leaders um, in this area of student activities. And uh, I think um, I think it's going to be exciting to see what what is developed this year. I think there's going to be a year of a lot of new activity. Yeah, and I just it just you just made um, me remember, you know, Robin often talks, Robin Hilger, uh, about ACDA 360. I don't know, maybe we should get t-shirts made or something, Sundra, but it's, uh, you know, often we think about the conferences, right? And we try to make it there and we get that that real infusion of energy and, and learning. Um, but Robin often talks about, wait, ACD is here all year long. Like, how can we, you know, be active in all the days that are not conference days? So please reach out. I'm just going to put my name, uh, my email here in the chat, but I know that you can uh, find it online too. And with any thoughts or ideas that you have about the collegiate area, we'd just really love to hear from you. So with that, thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Hope it's cooler where you're living. <laughs> and hope to see you very soon. Thanks.